Good morning and welcome to This Week with Pastor Dino. I'm Dino and I'm so glad you're joining us here at First Presbyterian Church of Bradenton, where we are cultivating hearts for Jesus from the heart of downtown. It is Monday, May 17th of 2021. It's the 137th day of the year. God is good and a lot has changed this week, but before we get there telling you what's going on in the church, let's begin with a short devotional from the book of Psalms. Psalm 45, 7. You love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore God, your God, has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. On Sunday, we talked about the anointing of Jesus. A, a woman shows up to the house of a man named Simon the leper where Jesus is at, and she anoints him with oil. Um, it's a major sacrifice, and it's a response to God's love for her that she does this, a loving response to Jesus that, that prepares him ultimately for the crucifixion, uh, calling him the, the perfect sacrificial lamb for our sins. Uh, we talked a bit about what it means to live into the righteousness and joy of the Lord and have him pour that anointing out on our head. Um, because of God, not because of our own doing, uh, we have grace and we have his love and we have salvation that comes from him. But what is our response? How should we be living? Uh, that's a question that we need to be asking ourselves every single day. Uh, and we ought to be living into the righteousness and the joy of the Lord receiving all his blessings and in turn going out and blessing the world. We should be as Christians willing to sacrifice like the woman sacrificed, give up our own wants and desires for the good of the kingdom. So be thinking about that this week. Thanks be to God. This week, the church office will be open all week long. And you may have seen, um, but if you haven't, we have updated our mask requirements, making now masks optional at First Presbyterian Church. We've been keeping up with the CDC guidelines um, pretty much this whole time. So our session decided to go ahead and remove the mask requirement. Of course, this applies to people who've been fully vaccinated and we're gonna do it on the honor system. So if you're feeling sick, if you haven't been fully vaccinated, if you've got something going on, compromised immune system, or if you just prefer to wear a mask and be extra safe, please feel free to keep wearing masks at First Presbyterian Church, but know that they are not required. Now this week, we have a really exciting opportunity to talk to new member, Margie Dutcher, who's going to be introducing to our church the Faith Community Nursing Program here at the beginning of June, which is when they're kicking things off. She has an amazing team ready to go, but I wanted you all to hear what Margie has to say about how the Faith Community Nursing Program came into existence. So let's take you there. Well, I am here with Brand new First Presbyterian Church member, Margie Dutcher. Um, Margie, how are you doing today? I'm terrific. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm really excited that you are here because for a long time you've been a part of this faith community nursing program. And uh, why don't you tell us first off a little bit about yourself, tell us about your family, where you came from, how you ended up at First Presbyterian Church. Okay. Well, my name is Margaret, but people call me Margie Dutcher. And, um, I was originally from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, so go pack. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> we're going to go there, aren't we? That's okay. That's okay. But we'll, that's all right. We'll, we're going to leave that on there for everyone, okay? <laughs> You'll make some friends, trust I, me. I hope so. Somewhere <laughs> along the line, right? <laughs> but I went to college in Minnesota at Hamlin University and have a degree in music education. I was a string bass and voice major. And then somewhere along the way, um, we we're, I, got married, had children, and then I was living in Mount Prospect, Illinois, and went to a Crisio weekend, which is a walk with Christ. And during that weekend, God spoke to me and said, you're going back to school to be a nurse. And I'm like, uh-uh, Lord, you're crazy. I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but I did. And uh, so then I, I went back to school and I got my RN. And uh, that was 40 years ago. Wow. So, yeah. It's, it's interesting because, you know, you go through this life and we think we're on a specific path, right? And we, we've worked towards it. We have a career. We're making money. We have a mortgage to pay. And, and for the Lord to kind of intersect that and, yeah. and shift gears for you, that must have been kind of jarring and scary, I would imagine. It was. It was because I had to go back to school to study some things that 
anatomy, chemistry. Right. Uh, I was a music major too, so I know that I, I took all the classes for non-science majors uh -huh. and kind of got through by the skin of my teeth focusing on the music stuff. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so h how cool. So you end up 40 years ago becoming an RN. Correct. And uh, you worked, I was just assuming, hospitals, clinics, whatever. I've, I've done, you name it, and I've been there. It, except two places, the emergency room and intensive care. I'm like, uh-uh. <laughs> Wait, last time you told God, uh-uh, that's uh, where he put you. I know. So you do so, need to be careful. Uh. <laughs> um, but with all that said, so you at some point in your nursing career come across this faith community nursing program. How did that all come about? I was the music director at this large church in Illinois, and then the pastor came up to me and he said, I want you to be the nurse in the church. And I said, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because Where that's a, kind of a strange concept. I know, kind of different. I said, well, I know we have a school attached to this, so that would be not the school nurse, right? And he went, no, not the school nurse, the nurse in the church. So how that came about was uh, there is a Lutheran theologian by the name of Granger Westberg who has since passed away. But he was the chaplain at um, Lutheran General Hospital in Park Ridge, Illinois. And he brought together the concept of saying, when people are hurting, when people don't know answers to some questions, where do they go? Guess what, they go to the church. And there's usually a staff there and they're, they take care of most things, but sometimes it's, you know, I don't know what to do with this, or I right. need some help with that. Well, a lot of times people will come to me and, you know, hey, Pastor, what do you think I should do? I mean, I'll be in the hospital on a visit. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you think I should do? And I, that's so far out of my pay grade. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have that kind of information. I've been in those situations, and you just don't have the resources. Right. Um, so, yeah, that's... So it was wonderful to be attached to a hospital. Sure. And then... It, at the time, it was a paid position, so I was paid by the hospital, but my unit was the church. Okay. So I spent my time in the church doing research, referrals, a lot of talking to a lot of people. I eventually, I met Mike, and then we wound up moving here. And um, BayCare, uh, the BayCare system is supportive of it. Okay. And uh, specifically, then I was out of uh, St. Anthony Hospital and went through this wonderful foundations course. I'm gonna hold it up because it's just such a small thing. <laughs> but it's called Foundations of Faith Community Nursing. And it is now a program that is um, sanctioned by the American Nurses Association. And then we came and met you. And I said, so Dino, have you ever heard of faith community nursing? And I had not. It was, <laughs> it was a completely foreign concept to me, but I, I will admit, I mean, you handed me the book. I <laughs> flipped through it. I'll admit that I flipped through it, and that's about all I'm going to admit. That's okay. Because that is a lot of reading. But the concept and what it could do for our church was very compelling to me. Uh, because I've been in those situations as a pastor, I don't have medical resources on hand. Mm -hmm. And um, if folks tune in to our interview next week uh, on the next morning show, we're gonna tell them all about how this is now gonna be implemented here at First Presbyterian Church. So Margie, thank you so much for being here and we'll see you again soon. Thank you. This week in terms of online programming, we've got the ABCs of Faith coming at you with the letter S, now Larry, broke my streak last week and head to head. So he's up one and I'm not very happy about it, but let's see if I can reclaim the title this week on the S's and see if I can get back to beating Larry and head to head. I did have my COVID shot, I'm blaming it on that. Let's see what happens this week. We've also got breakfast and Bible study on Saturday morning at 10 o'clock. That's held over Zoom and you can join that class on Zoom by going to our church website, bradenton.church slash Zoom, and it'll give you all the information you need to join. We also have worship at nine and 11 on Sunday morning. It's been really fun around here with folks coming back for worship and we've been filling up more and it's very exciting to see new faces, new folks from our community. So we look forward to that.
Let's remember that the Lord loves righteousness. That means we have a choice as to how we're going to live our lives. Are we going to live into righteousness and avoid wickedness? And that's a path that each one of us has to choose. But the Lord wants to pour out the anointing of his salvation upon each one of our heads. So in response, let us live in righteousness. Let us live for his sake. Let us be willing to give our all for the kingdom. Until next time, I look forward to seeing you then on This Week with Pastor Dino. Always when we're in here filming is when somebody decides I to have a horn to horn to fight. <sighs> okay. Part two. Part two. Oh. <laughs> There's not a wedding going on today, is there? I'm I'm pretty <laughs> sure. I'm pretty I don't think this window's even open. I'm pretty sure that's just oh, oh they do. do they? I mean, no, I'm not going to try. They're still going. I know. It's been like two minutes of that. So when you're here is a long time. Gee whiz. <laughs> I wonder what's going on. I mean, I... I want to believe that there's somebody down there with like a honk if you love Jesus sign outside our church, but I don't think there is. Um, I think there's just people who are angry. It's all those northerners. 